Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS, better known as Great Millstone, who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. And uh, before we get started today, uh, I just want to make a disclaimer to say that um, I am in no way, shape, or form um, in any of the uh, GMS camps. All right. Um, I just give double honors, starting with the apostles, Apostle Tahar, Apostle Gabar, Apostle Aramla, and uh, Apostle Rakar, and as well to the bishops and elders in Connecticut and to the teachers alike, uh, because it is through those men who I believe through the spirit that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai has set up. All right. To uh, reach out to the elect of Israel. All right. And um I've learned this 144% truth from those men, all right? So I give uh, all glory and praise to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh for setting those men up. And um, the title of this lesson, uh, I don't want this to be too long. I just want to hit a couple of quick points uh, pertaining to sexual lust, such as uh, masturbation. Now, this is a, a topic um, that I've been seeing that has been... Uh, coming up time and time again, especially for a lot of newcomers that are coming into faith. All right. You so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans who are the true biblical Israelites that the Bible speaks of. And I thought it would be a, a good idea to go into it. Now, first and foremost, uh, we have to ask the question, uh, what is masturbation? That's the first question. So I pulled up a little uh, definition here on Google. Let me just brighten my screen. Masturbation. All right. And it says here. Uh, stimulation of genitals with the hand of sexual pleasure, right? It says here, similar to auto uh, eroticism, self gratification, self stimulation, hand relief, self abuse, onanism, all right, playing with oneself, all right, in the vulgar slang, it says here, wanking, wank, hand job, frig, frigging, beating ones, the meat, all right, you get the picture. Now, I also took it a step further and I actually looked up on Google is masturbation a sin in the Bible. And it says here at the top, the biblical story of Onan, Genesis, the 38th chapter. I think that starting around verses nine on down is traditionally linked to referring to masturbation and condemnation thereof, which clearly, if you understand the story with Onan. All right. It had nothing to do with masturbation. It had everything to do with Onan's disobedience of not fulfilling the kinsman redeemer, um, which his brother had passed away. So he was told to go in, all right, uh, uh, unto his brother's wife so that he can bring up seed for that inheritance. And he didn't do that. He spilled, he ended up spilling his seed on the ground. Hence onanism, which we call that today, the pullout game, right? Your pullout game is strong. But nevertheless, it says, but the sexual act described by this story is coitus interrupts, which when you understand co coitus, right? Let's, uh, Salakia, let me get my, um, let's look it up in the etymology. All right. Coitus, it says copulation, sexual intercourse. Okay. That's all it means. It means to come together. Coitus, all right. Meet, assimilated from, of come together. Now, right here under this ad, Coitus interruptus means sexual intercourse in which the penis is voluntarily withdrawn from the vagina before ejaculation. Hence, in modern terms, pull out, right, for the purpose of avoiding uh, conception. And in this case, in Genesis, the 38th chapter, that was the whole uh, story behind Onan and what he did. All right. He committed. Salakia was called coitus interruptus. All right. He just pulled out. That's all he did. Nothing short of that. And he was judged for it. All right. But it says here, but the sexual act described by this story is coitus interruptus, not masturbation. Right. There is no explicit claim in the Bible that masturbation is sinful. Now, the next question we have to ask ourselves um, is what is sin according to the Bible? All right. Let's get some precepts. All right, let's get uh first John chapter three and verse four. Right, right at the top. It says, Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. You see that? So is masturbation, according to the Bible, a sin? Well, 
let's type it in, all right? Because what you'll find is when you type in the word masturbation, for starters, it's nowhere to be found. And now that we know what masturbation is, okay, there is nowhere in the scriptures, not even in the Apocrypha, that speaks on the act of masturbating. Now, one point I want to make, right, when you grab Hebrews, the 13th chapter, all right, let's get an understanding first. It says here, Hebrews 13 and 4, marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled, okay? But whoremongers and adulterers, the most high will judge. Now, why did I bring out this precept? Because first of all, marriage is sex, okay? Let's, let's understand that. And when you get the word sex in the Latin, it goes back to sacre, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, or sextus, which means to divide or cut, okay? So when you are presented to your virgin, okay, your rod, stimulates or penetrates the woman's vagina and when you penetrate the vagina you uh, as you going in all right you cut your woman's what's known as her hymen okay that's what it means when you have sex for the first time you cutting the hymen or you're dividing the hymen and what happens is all right there's blood that will obviously be on uh the penis and on the bed sheets which in our law if you go back and read the book of deuteronomy it talks about the token of virginity, which was proof that when the mother and the father presented their daughter to that man that she was betrothed to, all right, that man found her as a maid, okay? So basically, when you're married, okay, sex consecrates a marriage, all right? Even it says that even in the uh, Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, when you look up the definition of marriage. And in order to have the marriage continue uh, to be nourished, all right. It tells you in that definition that sexual intercourse is what nourishes the marriage. And Paul uh, explicitly uh, will select you, not explicitly, but Paul straight and forward breaks this down in first Corinthians, the seventh chapter pertaining to marriages, which I'm going to grab right after this. Now, when it says the, uh, the bed is undefiled, that means you can pretty much do anything uh, with your wife in the bedroom for the exception all right. And I have to throw this out here as a disclaimer. All right. Anal is wicked. All right. So if you if you brothers are out there doing anal, OK, with your woman, you need to stop. OK, that's wicked. You're going off by doing that. That's not what it was made for. All right. That's not what it was made for. And I'll leave it at that. But nevertheless, OK, anything that you do in a bedroom, OK, with your woman. All right. It is undefiled. OK, that's between you and your woman in the bedroom. Now, the reason why I say this and bring up this precept is because if you're masturbating. OK, let's go back to that definition really quickly. Right. Let me pull it up. It says a stimulation of the genitals with the hand for sexual pleasure. So if you're stimulating your genitals, one could say that if you're in a bedroom with your, your, your husband or your wife, all right. Masturbation cannot just be in a form of you doing it, but you can also be masturbating your partner. All right. As a means to foreplay or get off. OK, so there's different levels of context that we have to take into account. Now, do I say all of that to say that it's OK to masturbate? No, that's not what I'm saying. OK, nor am I saying to it's OK to go out and do what you do, because the next thing that brings me to my point within this lesson is we have something that's called excess. All right, which let's look up that word excess, right? Excess. And it says here what? And an amount of something that is more than necessary, permitted or desirable. OK, lack of moderation, especially in eating or drinking. All right. Exceeding a prescribed or desirable amount, because when it becomes a problem. All right. If you are doing that sort of act to yourself, okay, you start to make what the scriptures call making provisions to the flesh. Let's grab that. That's uh, James chapter one. All right. Uh, Salakia. Is that what I wanted? James. Salakia. No, Hebrews chapter 13. And uh, was it Hebrews 13 that I wanted? No, Romans, Salakia, brothers, forgive me. Romans, Romans chapter 13, verse 14. 
It says, but put ye on the Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. OK, because when you let's look at that word provisions first off. Right. Let's get some understanding. OK. Strong's G 4307. Pranoia. Pranoia. Which is what? Forethought, preventional care to make provisions for a thing. OK, so if your sole thought 24 seven is to masturbate, masturbate and to, you know, uh, give forethought on pleasing the flesh, then that can lead to a path of destruction for you. OK, even though it's not a sin where there is too much access thereof, it can lead to a downfall for you. And we and this is why I'm doing this lesson to show you through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemiah Rashad that we have to use discernment. OK, and walk with circumspect, because in these latter days, we should be doing everything of not fulfilling the lust of the flesh in the world. Let's get uh, John. Let's get first John chapter two and verse 15. It says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. And why is that? Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. You see that? And the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. OK, because look at everything that's going around. All right. In the world today, under the uh, heavy influence and frequency of Babylon, the great. Now, when you get the word Babylon, it goes back to Babel, which equals what? Confusion. Right. Everything you do, anything you turn around and see is just utterly confusion, abominable, wicked acts being done on all levels and not to mention okay there's so much frequency of pushing sex 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 out there into the world that is very hard for a brother uh you know women too but more so a brother to try to uh tame himself all right walking in the spirit okay that's why the scripture speaks about pray that uh pray that you be not tempted okay Let's, let me see if I can. What is that? Matthew 26. Yep. Salakia, Matthew 26, verse 41. It says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. You see that? All right. Because our spirit is willing, you know, to do it, but the flesh is weak. Going back to uh, Galatians, the fifth chapter, which speaks about the uh, spirit is contrary to the flesh. All right. And if you want to know the works of the flesh, read Galatians chapter five and start at verse 19. OK, so what to do in the situation? All right. And I'm not just speaking for the men, but I'm also speaking for the women. All right. Now, my judgment would be this. All right. And it, this is also just and an advice. All right. Advice. All right. I'm not saying to go out and do this. It's just advice. Look at it. No, nothing more. Just advice. Let's go to 1 Corinthians and we're going to wrap it up here. OK, chapter seven, or actually I might get a couple more precepts after this, but let's see where the spirit leads me. 1 Corinthians chapter seven. Now, Paul speaks about. All right. Marriage. All right. Now, the where I want to get out of this is where Paul makes a statement in verse two and also in verse nine. But let's start at the top. It says now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. OK, because you have to understand um, Paul was set up all right, to be an apostle and mainly to preach to the Gentiles, which are the Israelite foreigners. However, OK, the most high, uh, you know, made it so where uh, Paul uh, didn't uh, lust or long for a woman. His sole purpose was to focus on the ministry. All right. And this is the reason why he said that it is good for a man not to touch a woman, because later on in this chapter, when you jump down. All right. It tells you the reason why, because when you're married. All right. Your things and that you do. All right. Is of this world because you're married. Uh, uh, you're married to your woman and you're trying to please her rather than trying to please the most high. You how about you shot and try to do the will of what we're called to do upon this ministry. OK, that's later on in the chapter. But here's the point. Let's drop down to verse two. It says, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Because what tends to happen? All right. Now, when you get that word fornication, it goes back to the uh, Greek word uh, pornea or panaya. 
right? Strong's G, 4202. Parnaya. Parnaya. All right. Pornaya, which is what? Illicit sexual intercourse. All right. Meaning abominable uh, and wickedness of different sexual acts. All right. When you look up the word illicit. OK, it says it, it can fall under. It says here adultery, which adultery in simple terms is if a man. All right. Messes or sleeps with another man's wife. OK. A man can have more than one woman. But all right. When he steps into that territory of dealing with another man's woman, all right, that's um, all right, that's going off, all right, that's wicked, right? Adultery for a woman is if she's married to a man and she goes and she sleeps with an uh with any other man, it doesn't matter. Okay, that's adultery for the woman, all right. Both is punishable by death, right? Uh fornication, all right, which uh also includes homosexuality, lesbianism. Intercourse with animals, which we call that today bestiality. And then you also have sexual intercourse with close relatives, which we call that what? Incest. And all of these can be looked up in a law when you go back to Leviticus, the 18th chapter. Go back and read that on your own time. All right. Now, there's also a thing called sexual intercourse with a divorced man or woman. Now, in the precept here they give in Mark, the 10th chapter, this goes into how Yahweh breaks down how that whosoever shall put away his wife. All right. And uh, and they go on to marry another have committed adultery against her. Why? Because Yahweh Shah made it plain and simple. It was never meant for us to divorce our women from the beginning. OK, when uh, when you when the man and the woman, which are known as twain, come together as one flesh. OK, uh, it was expounded upon by big brother Yahweh Shah. Let let the uh, uh, what the most high have called. Let no man put us under, meaning what? Let nobody separate, okay? Because it was never meant for us to divorce, okay? Now, the divorcement was given because of the hardness of our forefather's heart. That's why Moses gave the bill of divorcement, all right? And that's a different topic within a different day. But just to get back to the point at hand, the only time us men can divorce pertaining to what Yahweh Shai said was on the grounds except for adultery or fornication, okay? Now... The scripture says that the woman is bound by the law. That's in Romans, I believe, the seventh chapter and also first Corinthians, uh, the seventh chapter, verse 32. OK, let's grab that. Let's first Corinthians seven and thirty two. Uh, thirty nine, Salakia. First Corinthians seven and thirty nine here at the bottom, it says the wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead. She is at liberty to be married to whom she will only in the Lord. You see that? That's the only time she can uh, remarry because it talks about in verse 11 right here at the top. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. So even if you guys fall out, you know, or you break up or, you you know, the, you, you can you, you she has to remain unmarried because she's bound by the law. OK, and then or she has an opportunity to reconcile to her husband and let not the husband put away his wife. OK, so because it was not it was not so. OK, from the beginning. So that's what that's going into. All right. So the whole thing is this. Right. Verse two, again, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Now, when you drop down to verse nine. OK, we'll start at verse eight. It says, I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. Because remember, Paul wasn't married, which gave him more time to focus on the ministry of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. But listen to what he says in verse nine. But if they cannot contain, OK, because everybody is different. Every man is different. All right. Every man has his own desire. Every you know, it, it is what it is. Right. It says, but if they cannot contain. Let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. OK, and the reason why I wanted to bring this out is because a lot of you brothers, that's what's happening to, to a lot of y'all that's coming into this truth. All right. You being out there in the world. All right. You on social media, you see all different types of wickedness and the vibration of Babylon. All right. You get all horny and stuff like that. And then you go off and you start masturbating. All right. But. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh my advice would be, as Paul said here, okay, if you cannot contain yourself, 
All right. The best thing, brothers, uh, that you can do. All right. And this is just advice is to go and be with a woman. OK, go and be with the woman and, and ladies likewise as well. Go and find and be with the husband. Now, the scriptures tells us. Uh, let me get the Apocrypha really quickly. Right. Let's get uh, Ecclesiasticus, better known as Sirach, chapter 26 and verse three. All right, listen up for the brothers. It says a good wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. OK, so if you fear your how about Shimei, I was shy. All right. Remember, the scripture says for us to seek ye uh, the kingdom and all and everything else will be added unto us. All right. Because the most high through his son, Yahweh Shai, he they, they know what we need. OK, what we should what we should be doing is we should be focusing on this truth. We should not be lusting after women, period. OK, it tells you what's that in, in uh, first address. Um, what is it? The fourth chapter uh, or the eighth chapter, how there be many men that have gone out of their wits for women, because once you get with a woman. All right. It gets worse. If, and this is why I said there's there's where there's so much ac uh, excess of stuff. If you've been masturbating and let's say you go out and you've, uh, you know, got a woman and you're dealing with her. All right. Now, too, when is too much? All right. You can, you know, do too much. You know, there's been there's uh, been people that have come out, you know, on a record of saying even what they've gotten with someone and, you know, they're being entertained within the bedroom. They're still masturbating behind closed doors. So you need to be very careful where there is too much excess of that. All right. Because it can lead to your uh, downfall and your destruction. All right. Which is why I brought out first uh, John chapter two, verses 15 through 17 uh, pertaining to the lust of this world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. All right. Because you got brothers. All right. When they are already dealing with a woman. OK, remember, we live in Babylon. So when you go out, you know, brothers want to go and deal with other women because they that horny. All right. But here's the here's the kicker. What at all? Like, you know, because we living in Babylon are great. All right. That that uh the, the the majority of the women that you deal with these days, they're not even going to tell you the truth on who they dealing with. All right. And, um, I'll you know, I'll say this just to add, you know, emphasis uh, to the lesson. There's a brother that, that goes around on Facebook. I don't know if y'all uh, seen the videos, but basically he be interviewing. He always be picking people who are in relationships and he does the, uh, the test. Uh, are you uh, are you faithful test? So what he'll do is he'll grab the two and then he'll see which one wants to go first to uh, test their faith to see if they're being faithful within the relationship. Right. And nine times out of ten, when he always goes to the woman. All right. She starts to look down. She starts to buck up. She doesn't want to go first. And the reason being is because the man that she's with that's standing on the opposite side waiting for her to open up her phone. When they finally open up her phone, she has over several contacts of different guys who she's messing with. All right. And this is why, okay, starting with the apostles and elders on down. All right. This is why they tell brothers, even as such as myself. All right. Don't worry about these women in these last days. OK. And if you're struggling. All right. With the act of masturbation, the first thing, first and foremost, is pray and fast that the Heavenly Father takes that spirit off from you. OK. That's the first thing. Get get, get your house in order. All right. Put off the weak nature. All right. Be a man. Gird up your loins and and, and, and do away with that uh, that that type of spirit, man, because that's a perverse spirit that's on you. All right. And no, it doesn't help. It doesn't make it easier because of, you know, the way that, you know, Esau Edom has set up its society because you have uh, sex all, all around you. All right. You can't even open up your phone without seeing an ad of, of, of a damn, uh, uh, you know, woman's uh, backside or her, or her upper uh, part, her breasts and everything showing out. All right. Like we're surrounded by it. But this is where we have to walk through the spirit, fellas. All right. To the best of our ability. OK, this is why it also says in uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 17 and verse 25, it says, return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. We know that we're subject to vanity pertaining to Romans 8 and 20. All right. We're we're in this flesh. OK, but we have to do a better job. All right. And focusing on getting first, getting the hell up out of here, 
preaching this word, putting the ministry first. All right. And everything else will follow. So, uh, Yahweh Ratazai, um, that's all, um, that I wanted to go into today. Lord willing, you guys were edified. And, uh, as I said, just as an advice, all right, brothers, if you're struggling with that, pray fast and there's nothing wrong with you dealing with a woman. All right. But you have to keep everything in this proper perspective. All right. There has to be order. OK, you have to walk with circumspect and you have to discern. OK, we are at the time where we have to discern. OK, because as the scripture says, redeeming the time. Why? Because the days are evil. All right. So there's all types of enchantments going out, witchcraft, wickedness on all sorts of levels, man. And you do not want to get caught up in the, in, in, in the last minute of things when everything goes completely left. All right. So that's it for me. Yahweh Ratazai, you guys were edified. Until the next time. Shalom.